First Sergeant Cap here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters, and today we have a field craft project. How to make a glut. Now, a glut is simply a wooden wedge for splitting wood. Um, you don't need to carry around those, those heavy, obnoxious steel wedges. Um, you can make uh, a tool that would have been very ubiquitous um, in any Civil War camp in the field. Um, and it's, it was made and used for all sorts of different uses. Um, you would um, make gluts and use them to uh, split green logs to make fence rails. You could use it to help make fortifications. Um, but I like to uh, show people how to make these at bivouacs and at, at events to help them uh, split gnarly wood. Um, obviously, like if it's something that, you know, is only going to be split by like a 20 ton log splitter, this isn't going to do anything. Um, but maybe you only have a hatchet in your knapsack and you need to process some firewood. Um, maybe you don't have a lot of axe experience or a lot of strength. This can really help you uh, split wood and process wood down a little bit more. Um, and the other nice thing too is it's a great demonstration activity uh, to show something that's going on in camp that would have been used. And it's also a good way to kind of start um, seeing your environment as a tool store because that's what so many people throughout history have done. So um, how do these work? Well, you first need to have a piece of wood. You need to um, start a split. Um, you can't just put this into a solid piece of wood and by sheer force uh, split the piece in. So you need to kind of get it started with either your hatchet um, or an ax. And uh, well, once it's started, you can use these tools to, to drive the wedge in. You would never want to drive an iron or steel wedge with an ax or a hatchet. Uh, one, it's dangerous and it can throw uh, metal shavings around. And um, it's also, it's really bad for your tools. Um, you should use good tools and take good care of them. And the last thing you want to do is ruin your edge tools by banging uh, a steel wedge with them. Now, this is, if this is all you got uh, on a bivouac, this will work. Um, ideally, you would use a, um, a maul, to, uh, a wooden maul, to um, drive your wooden wedge. And so you could just use a, a, a branch, a log. Sometimes these can get quite large. Um, but we also show you uh, in a previous video on how to make your own uh, wooden mallet. And that could also be handy to have around camp. And that will also make sure that your wedge will last a lot longer. So what woods to choose from if you want it to last? Um, ideally, you're going to want to have a hardwood. Um, these ones are oak because that's what was at the event site. Um, if you have a choice, um, interlocking grain woods like dogwood and elm would be fantastic. Um, locust is a good choice uh, as well as uh, sycamore. Um, but if all you have is softwood like spruce, pine, or fir, um, you can use it to get you out of a out of a tight situation when it comes to processing firewood or you know splitting a log. Uh, just know that a softwood is going to be much more consumable and not as durable as a hardwood one. That said, these are all consumable items. Um, Unless you just use uh, use it on light light demonstrations, um, these will eventually end up in the fire. They don't they don't last for forever. Um, but you can also use these say if you want to just kind of continue green woodworking. It's a great way to um, split uh, logs to rive logs along the grain, so you can use them for uh, joinery or carpentry, or maybe even preparing a, a bowl blank for some spring pole lathe work. Uh, these are really great uh, to know how to make. Um, and also to demonstrate. So let's get started. Uh, I have another one that I've been tinkering on. So how big are we talking? You can customize these any way you want. So you can make them as big as you need, um, the taper as long as you need, as stubby, um, 
as, as sharp or as obtuse as you need. Um, but I find that this size works pretty good for what we use it for. My rounds are about three inches in diameter and oh this one's eight and a half inches and this one's this one's about nine inches so that's what i'm working with so the first thing i'm going to do is going to take the bark off and get it cleaned up so i can kind of see more of what i'm working with now this is a great um beginner activity uh if you're new to working with an axe um, these are really simple skills to kind of um, build up your experience. Um, but if you are totally new, one thing you can do to be extra safe is rather than cutting your um, billets down to like their final length, if this is on a, a larger piece, like on, on a larger branch, cut it long so that way your hand and your body is even further away from the cutting edge as you work it. And then once your taper is done, then all you have to do is trim it to length with a saw, or you can use your, your hatchet for that too, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna get to debarking this, and then we'll start the taper. There, now we pretty much have the bark off of our billet. Again, this isn't, you know, fine woodworking. It doesn't have to be flawless, but if you want, want to make it fancy, have at it. So now we need to decide on a taper for the wedge. Essentially, you're just looking at something that's going to be even on both sides, and then you're going to make it to your desired dimensions. So, this one, this wedge shape goes up, oh, about five inches. Yeah, about five inches up on my piece. So this seemed to work really well. So let's stick with that. So how'd I do that? A lot of times I'll use hand measurements in the field. Yeah, so the width of my hand from the end down is going to be my the length of my taper so um again just kind of pick your preferred side and so i'm going to be right there i saw the mark there come over to the other side there you go i got two marks to kind of roughly guide me down and you just get to chopping. This is where having good sharp tools is um, not only more efficient, but it's also safer. Now, I'm not going over all the hatchet and axe safety um, aspects of this video. There are tons of other people out there on YouTube that can walk you through this. But um, the one thing I will say if you're new to doing this sort of thing is you don't have to chop everything off in one swing. It's so much more efficient and safer to take a series of small um, chops and just kind of work your way down. And then just obviously, you know, keep your fingers out of the way. Now we have our wedge cut in. Now, how how fine of an edge you come to is going to be up to you. Um, obviously, if you go to a just a razor edge, uh, it's going to be very fragile and break, uh, and probably be more likely to catch uh, on the split. Um, so you'll want to leave it um, 
leave a little bit of bulk in there but you know these are always a little bit um, customizable to your specific wood splitting needs and you can also just uh, sort of ch chamfer the edge down here a little bit um, to kind of help make it a little more a little more durable but this is going to get chewed up no matter what so that's the working end so um, now we just have one last thing to do before we put it into use and that is we need to chamfer the edges on the striking side um, of the glut um, and this is going to make sure that we don't uh, if we miss we don't start breaking off chips of our um, of our glut so um, you don't have to be very fancy about this you just want to cut the corners off so that way you don't you don't have uh, a sharp edge that will break easily when you're using it Okay, let's see if it works. Now, you need to have uh, a notch already kind of started. So, I got one started with my axe. So, let's, let's try something small. So maybe you just have your pack hatchet, okay? Just like that. I hope this uh, useful field craft project uh, will come in handy someday for you. Um, yeah, it's great to do at events. It's useful in the field. And um, with a little, bit of, a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience, you'll be able to better understand and employ 19th century tech. Um, thanks for liking and subscribing. Thank you for all of your wonderful comments. And as always, we'll see you next time.